Hello and welcome to part 4 of the Complete Beginner's Guide to Blender 3. In this episode we'll be looking at modifying our meshes, so going into edit mode, and we'll be able to make those more detailed features of our character. Do remember to check out the playlist on this channel or my website for more great content. So here's where we got up to last time, and there's a few shapes on our character that aren't in the basic mesh list, so we're going to have to edit the shape of the mesh. So if I come around to the back of the head here, and if we start working on the hair, for example, which goes just here, I'll shift right click, shift A to add, and add a cube in, scale it down, and then come around to front view. I'll zoom in just a touch, and scale in the x-axis, and G to grab in the x to move it across. Scale a bit more in the x, so somewhere around here, but it's got this little bit sticking out as if it's sticking out over some ears. So in order to create sort of extra bits that stick out, we need to go into edit mode. You can change the modes up here. Currently we're in object mode. If I click on this, we can go across to edit mode. Now to explain this further, I'm going to put the shape in local mode. So that's under view, local view, and that's numpad forward slash. If I press that, we can only see that one shape. It makes it much easier for editing. And we need a small section that sticks out the front here. Now with our shape, we have vertices as you can see there and I can left click to select one of those and I can change to edges up here so edges and then I can select the different edges and then faces is the next one and I can choose the different faces and I can also press G to grab I right click to cancel that R to rotate and S to scale so we can edit the vertices edges and faces of our objects but in order to create a bit sticking out we're going to have to add more geometry now there's a few tools for doing this, but we're going to look at the most commonly used. Once you understand these tools, you can pretty much model anything you can think of. We'll start by looking at the extrude tool and the loop cut tool. Now you can find these tools down here. So there's extrude there, and there's also loop cut there, along with lots of other tools as well. If for any reason you can't see the toolbar, then press T and that will show and hide that toolbar. But I very rarely use these tools. Again, I use the keyboard shortcuts. So let's, with this front face selected, so make sure you're in face mode here. Incidentally, you can press one, two, or three on your keyboard, as long as you haven't got emulate numpad enabled, and that will take you to the different modes. So I'm on face mode. With this face selected, I can press E to extrude to pull that out and create a new section like this. But that's not quite right. If I go out of local mode with forward slash on my numpad, I actually wanted a section in here cut away. Well, back to local mode with forward slash, I could come around to the bottom here, select these bottom two faces, G to grab in the Z axis, move them up, and then select just this face and E to extrude to pull it down. Back out of local mode, and you can see we've got that sort of hair extension bit out the front here. And we might want to select this end face here, which is going all the way through there, and G to grab in the Y, move it back just a touch. So if you haven't already, pause the video here and catch up with me, and create the hair. Now what I've shown you is the extrusion method, but there's several ways of creating the hair or shapes like this. Let's talk about another one that we can use on the nose. So in order to add a new object now, if I press Shift A, I'm only seeing the mesh menu. Have a quick think why that might be. That's because I'm still in edit mode. So if I press Shift A and add in a plane, let's say, that is actually attached to this other object here. And if I go back into object mode now with tab, and press G, you can see they're stuck together. I'll undo that movement. If you accidentally do that, you need to go into edit mode. I can press P to separate, so P to separate by loose parts, and then they become different objects. Now when I go back to object mode with tab, the tab key is the keyboard shortcut for switching modes, or you can go to object mode up here. I can then choose either of these shapes again. I'll delete this plane because we don't need it. But just remember when adding new objects, make sure you're in object mode, and when I press Shift A to add, you get all the different options, not just the mesh menu. So if I press Shift right click to move my 3D cursor to the middle here, Shift A to add, mesh and then cube, scale it down. We've got a simple nose, but I'm going to make the nose slightly more complicated. So I can press S then Z to make it a long nose like this. And again, I'm going to go into edit mode and the keyboard shortcut is tab. So I'll tab into edit mode. This time, instead of extruding and changing the shape, I'm going to show you the loop cut. The shortcut key for loop cuts is Control R. And remember, you can find that tool down here as well. Now, when I move my mouse around, it's asking me where do I want to add a loop cut? And I want to add it around the middle here. I left click once, and I can then move it into any position I like. And then I left click again to set it. Now I've got that, I can come to the top edge here. Remember to be in edge mode for this and press G then Y and move that backwards to create this sort of strange nose looking thing like this. 
So a quick challenge to you is to create the nose by adding a cube, scaling it so it's long and thin, and then adding a loop cut around the middle so you can take that top edge and pull it backwards slightly. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so that's the nose. Let's go on to the mouth and I'll show you a different use of the extrusion tool. So before we add a new object, make sure you tab back into object mode or go to object mode up here, and then we can add our new object. So shift right click, shift A, mesh, and then cube. I'll scale that right down. And I'll go to front view so I can make sure these are positioned in the middle. I can do this by hand by selecting them and pressing G to grab. But also because I've modeled everything right in the middle here along the Z axis like this, if I press N and go to item, I've got my location written out here. And this is the X axis along here. And we can see it's not quite in the center. If I click on this and change it to zero, it is precisely in the center now. Same with the nose, click on that and type in zero. Now I know they are exactly in the center. I could do the same for the hair as well, actually. In this case, it won't make a huge amount of difference, but if you're one of those people who likes to be really precise, then you might be happier. Okay, so let's select our mouth again. I'll scale it up just a touch, and we need to create a kind of hole in it. I'll scale it in the Y so it's a bit flatter, and G, Y to move it out slightly. It doesn't matter if it overlaps the other shape slightly, that's not a problem. So into edit mode, and in order to create a hole through our mesh, we can use what's called a Boolean object, but that's for another day. Instead, let's go to local view and I'll show you another way we can kind of extrude shapes. So that's forward slash on my numpad to go to local view. I'll go to face mode and select the front face and the back face. So shift select both those. And I can E to extrude and S to scale and that will bring them in like this. So that's pressing E then S one after the other. But that doesn't quite work because it's bringing them closer together. Because it's taking the middle point of the two and bringing them in towards it. So I'll undo that. Instead, there's a tool called Inset, and you can press I to inset like this, and you can inset a face. And because I've got the back and front selected, I know they're exactly the same size. So I to inset, then move your mouse, then left click to set. Now I can press Delete to delete those faces, and we've got a hole in the middle. This doesn't completely work because we've got no solidity to our hole. So I need to fill the faces in between these two. I can go to edge mode now and select all these edges around here just by holding down shift and selecting them all. There are quicker ways to do that, but I don't want to overcomplicate it. And now with all my inside edges selected, we can do what's called bridging between the two edge loops or the two new holes that we've made. So in this case, filling in the gap, I can go to the edge menu here and bridge edge loops. And it does exactly that, fills in the gap and we've got our hole for the mouth. So that's under the edge menu, bridge edge loops. So I'll come back out of local mode with forward slash on my numpad, back into object mode with tab, and you can see we're getting quite close. Okay, so take a moment if you haven't already to pause the video and catch up with me by creating the mouth. Okay, so the last challenge to you is to make the eyes. All I've used is a cube for the iris and a cube for the pupil just sitting on top of the other one, and then mirrored it across to the other side. So pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so shift right click, to move my 3D cursor, shift A to add, mesh and then cube, scale it down. Let's come to front view for this and move it into position, G to grab, somewhere around there. And I can mirror this across the nose. So across the modifiers here, add modifier mirror, choose the mirror object, which is going to be the nose. It can be any of these objects which are along the middle here. They've all got their object center. If I click on that, you can see their object center right in the middle, so it's mirroring across. And then we've got some eyes they are sticking out a bit too far. So I'll select that G then Y, move them back to there. Or I can scale them as well, scale them in the Y and then maybe G then Y to move them out. It doesn't make much difference. Now I can duplicate these to make the pupils. So Shift D to duplicate. And then if I tap Y, I can move that out, scale it down. And we've got some pupils there. I'll make them nice and small, G then Y, and move them back into position like this. And his pupils are going to be at the top of his eyes, G then Z, because he's looking up at this scary monster. Okay, so we're certainly getting there. Now all we need is the torch, flashlight if you're American. So shift right click, shift A to add, mesh and then cylinder. I can rotate this along the X axis. So the X axis going across there, 90 degrees. So R, X, then 90 and press enter, scale it down and move it into position. I'll come to front view for that. So it's somewhere around there. And again, it doesn't matter too much if it's overlapping. Okay, so again, I need to edit this shape. So I'm going to scale it down a little bit further, somewhere around here, into edit mode with tab, into face mode with three, so that's face mode up here, and select the end face. Let's zoom in on this a little bit, so period key on my numpad, 
out just a touch. And I can press G then Y to extend this out this way. And then E to extrude to create an extrusion and S to scale. So I've made an extrusion and then scaled it up. Then I can press E to extrude to pull that outwards again. And we've got the makings of a torch there. And the last bit, I want a bit of glass in here that's going to be an emission. I can inset with I to pull that in like this and E to extrude and move backwards. And that creates an indent like this. So we've got our torch shape there. That can be quite a tricky one for beginners, but it's the most complicated shape we make. So if you manage that, you can easily manage the rest. If you find this really complicated, then just use a cylinder and don't worry too much. But it's something well worth getting used to, the extrusion tool with scaling and using the inset tool as well. You might want to modify your shape a bit. I think the back face here, G then Y, needs to come back a little bit so it's a longer flashlight or torch. And also, I can select a whole face loop like this, all these faces coming around here. If I'm in face mode, I can hold down Alt and select an edge going across the direction of the face loop. So one of these edges, and I can select all those faces around there. The same will work for this one, this one, and this one, all these face loops. So that's holding down Alt and left click on one of these edges to select an edge loop. And I can scale that down and press Shift Y so it doesn't scale in the Y to make my torch a bit thinner if I wanted to. So you can adapt the shape like that. And you can do all sorts, like grab the face at the back, inset this if you want, and then G to grab in the Y and pull it out slightly. It's up to you how you want to create your torch and add some complexity to it. So back into object mode, let's zoom out a bit and check our model. It's not looking too bad. I feel like the torch needs to be bigger, so I'll just scale it up a little bit like this. And there we have our man modeled. So your task is to model the torch, which brings us to the end of the modeling of the man. Hopefully you're still enjoying it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.